Thank you. Thank you for joining us again uh, on the third day of the workshop. Uh, we have some exciting uh, topics to, to cover today. I will just quickly go over the uh, agenda. Um, we will review the exercises. We had two exercises, the translations and the data store one that we did yesterday. And then we will take a little break, a 10 minute break and uh, Austin will um, give a presentation on performance. Uh, this is um, a new topic. Uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't covered last year and uh, also the application security. So it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting. I hope you look forward to that. Um, and then just like uh, last time, we will take a break and then go into breakout room sessions. Um, so yeah, um, I think I can uh, just jump right into the, um, the solutions uh, for the, uh, for the uh, translations uh, exercise. And uh, unless uh, someone, well, I can, I can actually, we, we can open the questions um, later. Um, okay, so you went to the, the link, uh, then you get this, uh, this window. So I'm just going to um, enter the, uh, the credentials. Um, okay. And then I'll go ahead and go and, and, and check what we have to do for the, um, uh, for the tasks. So the to do number one was to import uh, the function i18n. Um, I think this was a little bit tricky because um, um, <clears throat> there was, um, there is a recommendation if you remember last, um, uh, sorry, yesterday that, um, yeah, that you, you need to import um, locales that, uh, sorry, slash index.js um, somewhere in your application. Um, and then in, instead of, uh, uh, if you only import um, the package here, it won't work. You will need to import this as well. And you need to do this uh, at once. Um, so maybe, yeah, for some that was uh, not uh, clear. So. I'm just, yeah, okay. So in any case, this is, you can also check the, um, the readme, the instructions. And here it says, remember the app platform generates um, this file, which must be imported somewhere in the application to make it work. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, import, uh, and this is, uh, for some reason, Gold Sandbox doesn't actually show the locales uh, folder here, uh, but it should work. Okay. And then this is done for, for to do one. Uh, then let's check. Sorry. Okay, to do two, what, is, what, what, what do we need to do? Um, we need to add a simple translation to uh, the welcome message here, the H1 tag, um, and we need to have it available in French. Um, and then it says to create, um, to create the translation file uh, for the French one in the I18N uh, directory. So if you check uh, here on the left in the directory inside, we have um, a file that was um, generated uh, when I created this um, exercise. Um, and this is uh, a template. So I, I did look, <laughs> look it up what, what it stands for. So PO means a portable object and T is template. So portable object template, that's the extension. That's what it means. Um, so this is, um, you would always have this um, when you generate your, um, yeah, when you run yarn start, which was already done for you before. So in order to create um, the a French file, uh, what you would do is just copy the content of this template, uh, go to the folder, and create a new file. And then, and then now instead of T, uh, it's just um, a portable object. So this is the file that would contain the translations. 
So it's not um, a template. So just make sure that uh, you differentiate between this and uh, yeah. So here the um, instruction was to uh, translate this to uh, bienvenue. I, yeah, and I'll say this. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't I didn't uh, make this translatable yet. So I'm gonna have to um, uh, put this in curly braces. Um, I'm going to use my uh, function, and then remember that this is this has to be a, a string literal. Uh, so then now uh, I'll go ahead and save, and now it should. Um, it should work when I uh, generate the when it has to pick up the French translation that I just added. So I will um, open a new terminal. Uh, I just want to make sure that okay. So if you go to settings, um, you see that this is already in French, um, and it should already say Bienvenue when when. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. So let's see if it works. Just bear with me for a second. I need to enter. Uh, yeah, this again. And there you have it. So um, it's already uh, there. You, you, you. Um, um, yeah. So we have the we have done the the first task. Um, now the third one was um, to use interpolation for dynamic values. So instead of a hello user, uh, we want uh, the name um, the name of the user to be. Um, uh, to be picked up uh, by the translation uh, in a dynamic way. So um, from yesterday, if you remember, uh, also in the readme, just if you want to have, uh, um, uh, yeah, like a hint, I added this um, example. So if you have a variable here today state, for example, Wednesday, this is how you would include it in your uh, string, and then you need to pass uh, a second uh, object here, assigning this variable uh, to the date, to the string that will be translated. So now let's go ahead and, um, and make this. Uh, oops. Okay. Okay, so instead of user now, we have to um, use a variable name. That's what we want. And uh, you do that in double curly braces. Uh, and now we have to um, pass the key, um, the object. So this will be the key name. And what do we uh, want to do here? So as you can see, we are um, we are getting the, the data from the use data query, uh, which is me, uh, the resource me, and uh, that, that comes back, back from, uh, yeah, from our request. So then uh, to use this um, variable data will be data, the resource is me. And then what do we want to get? We want to get the name. Um, and then uh, here it says, uh, make sure to translate bonjour uh, to French as well. So we go back to our uh, file, French file, and then add the translation there. Uh, name like this. And uh, now we will have to uh, generate this translation again. So I'm gonna go uh, open a new terminal and run and hopefully it will work. Uh, 
Okay, and then, yes, so I'm just going to show you um, in a, okay, now it works. We have the, the French translation. So the, the um, so if this, if that, if I was the user, I'm the current user, then my name would show up. Uh, if someone else is like, uh, yeah, if, if it's um, uh, another user, then another name would show up. So this is dynamic and it's, uh, it's very convenient. I'm just going to show, uh, check if the English, uh, translation is there, uh, and it is, and this is pretty much it uh, for the um, for the tasks. Uh, so now, for example, if you want to add uh, Spanish translation, you would just create another file like this one. So it will be es.po, um, and you would just copy the content again uh, from this uh, template and, and add the translations. But then your app.js file is already set up, so you don't have to do anything, um, anything else. So you can just keep adding files here to be able to translate. Um, I think this is it. Uh, so if anyone has any questions about this, um, I believe that you can unmute yourselves. I'm not sure, or I'll check the chat. Um, are you still there? <laughs> okay. No questions, okay. Yes, this was uh, pretty simple. It was uh, demonstrated yesterday as well. So then I think, um, I think that's it. Um, Austin will show the, um, the, the solution for the data store exercise. Um, so Austin, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Deborah. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate the second exercise that we had yesterday. Um, first off, I'll uh, just ask if anyone had any questions um, about the second exercise or the, using the data store. The, was everybody able to, to um, uh, successfully use it? Please answer in the poll that I am, oops, I can't do this. I can't create a new poll, um, but we can maybe answer in the chat. Let's say. Was it, were you able to complete it? Maybe Martin can make, create a poll. And while we're waiting for results of that, I will go ahead and start talking about the data store exercise. Um, so here we have the, uh, the exercise uh, just here in, um, I'll, I'll actually do it in Code Sandbox so that everyone is on the same page. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our Academy website, Academy 2021, Workshop 2. Let's go ahead and go to Generic DH2 Apps. And we're going to start the data store sandbox. I do need to fork the sandbox. So now I have my own copy of this um, example exercise. I'm going to go ahead and open this up as a separate tab as well so that I can um, make this a bit bigger. So here we have the task instructions. We have four tasks here today. The first one is going to be uh, to import a data store provider and render it as a wrapper around the application. And we want to specify the namespace, this one, mine custom app namespace 1234. Um, you'll notice that in our d2.config.js, we already have that namespace configured, um, which means that it has been reserved for this application. So I'm going to go ahead and 
put this, uh, we'll start with task one, which is in um, the app component. So we need to wrap this, um, this app content with a data store provider. I'm gonna start by importing a data store provider, which is a named export of the DHS2 slash app service data store package. So now I will render that. So I have a data store provider and I'm going to pass it a namespace, which is the required, um, uh, the required property for this uh, component. I'm going to say my custom app namespace one, two, three, four. And I'm going to render the closing tag of the same thing. And there we have uh, task one complete. So basically this just uh, renders the data store provider around the entire application and uh, uses specifies this specific namespace that we want for our application. And note that this is a, a pretty unique namespace. Um, probably there isn't going to be another um, app that uses my custom app namespace one, two, three, four. But then again, uh, I would make this my, like the, the actual name of my application with some numbers after it potentially, just to make sure that uh, no one else would use this. Um, if someone else copied and pasted this sample code, they would use the same namespace and that would be problematic. So that's um, something we wouldn't want to happen. I'm going to go ahead and delete this here. And we should still see, I'm just going to demo this. Um, we should see that this, uh, oops, I need to do this again. So we should see that this, um, this app doesn't do anything, um, but it does run. It doesn't run any errors. Um, but now we've added this data store provider so we can start moving on to the next tasks. And maybe I got something wrong here, but I think this is correct. Yeah, we'll see if that uh, changes anything. So now let's move on to task number two. So task two was in visualization list to retrieve the user's list of saved, saved objects using the use saved object list hook. And this is, uh, so this is going to be using that use saved object list hook. So first we have to import that. Let's go ahead and do that here. So we're going to say import use saved object list from DHS2 app service data store. Now let's go ahead and retrieve that list. So we're going to get back a, a list of objects, of so saved objects, I call it that. Um, and then we also get back a set of um, functions, which I'm not going to fill out just yet because they aren't need, needed for this task. And this is gonna use the use saved object list hook um, and we're going to get the users saved objects. So we're not going to set global or any other um, properties here. Um, as uh, Kai, or sorry, um, as someone pointed out yesterday, I believe it was Pete um, on Slack, this const objects equals an empty array is just a placeholder. Um, so the, the, that objects is just meant to, to stop the errors from happening. Um, we can just use that same object, um, your same variable name objects here. And now we'll get a um, set of objects back from this list. Um, let's go ahead and refresh this. It should still not break, but because there's nothing in that, um, in that list of saved objects, we shouldn't see anything yet. But we can, if we go to the network tab here, Let's go ahead and get our XHRs. We can see that we are requesting the saved objects from this namespace um, and getting an empty list back. So now let's go to the next task. Task three is to pass an add function as a prop to the add control component. So I'm going to go ahead and pass 
an add function and I need to get this from somewhere. So I'm actually going to uh, uh, pass it here. So this is where the add function gets returned for the, the list of saved objects. This uh, will allow us to add a new object when we have one available. Um, the other part of this task was to go to the add control. And if we look at this, we're not receiving any props in this add control, but now we need an add function. So I'm going to add, uh, set that up here. So this is going to take an add function as a prop. And we'll see that the uh, add a new saved object with the name entered in the input. This is where we should be um, set, uh, setting up that uh, or creating that new saved object. So I'm going to click to uh, use that function that we just created called add. Um, and that should be coming here, yeah, let's add. And we should pass it an object. And that object should have, let's uh, use a name um, with new object, new visualization name, new viz name. That's what it's called. That's the state function uh, parameter that we're using. So. We now have a, um, the ability to add a new visualization, um, but you'll see that this is, this is actually a function that returns a promise. Um, and we're not waiting for that promise to finish before we set loading to false. So this will set loading to true and then immediately stop. It'll immediately set it to false. So there are two things that we could do here. We could either use the then uh, method of this promise to set the loading false after we're done with this, um, uh, after we're done with adding, or, and this is a little bit uh, of a sidebar, but we could turn this into an async function. So this could be add as is equals async. And the reason I'm not doing this for the on click event itself is because they're returning a, a, um, a promise sometimes can be a little funky on some uh, uh, DOM handlers. It should be okay on on click, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. So this is just going to create a new function and we can then do await add. And this will wait for, you can only use await within async functions. If you're not familiar with that, await says that we wait for this promise to finish before we move on to this next one. Um, and then we're going to call that function here. So this should work. Let's see how this works um, here today. Um, yep. So um, we'll see that we actually do have a, uh, probably from someone else um, using this user to create this, um, uh, this object in the thing, but let's see if we could had this uh, creation of a new object set up correctly. So let's say test object, add. And now we'll see that this test object actually does the right thing and we have uh, created a new object there. We can create a few with the same name to have different IDs so they, they can be um, created and deleted independently. Um, but maybe we don't want to um, keep, so once we, once we create the test object, it seems kind of silly to keep this text here as well. So let's just make this a little bit cleaner and clear that text. So before we set loading to false, let's set viz name, set new viz name to an empty string. Now let's see how this works. Now let's see, this is a test. And now let's see that this, this has been cleared. And we try to add a new visualization again, it shows us that alert that is set up in this component. So that was task number three. Now let's move on to task number four because we've created a bunch of these things, but our delete button doesn't really work yet. Um, we need to figure out how to, how to make that work. So let's go ahead and go to the remove button. Um, and this task four is to get, get the remove function for the object with ID ID and use the use save object hook to do that. Um, so you'll see that in the previous example, we used the, we passed the add function from the parent component. We could also pass the remove function from the parent component here, but uh, as kind of a demonstration, uh, we're going to have this 
component be completely independent? So it could be nested very far away from the, um, the list component and not have access to that remove function. So for this remove function, we're going to say, um, we're going to get the value of the use saved object that we, that we want. And then we're also going to say um, remove here. So this is, uh, there's, there's a few different functions that are returned here. There is update, replace, and remove um, from the use saved object hook. And we have to pass it an ID. So we're going to pass it the ID that we um, were, were given for this particular, um, uh, in the props for this component. You'll see that again, we have this placeholder that doesn't do anything. Um, that's just there to make get rid of errors before you fill this in. So we're going to get rid of that. And now we have this remove function, which works. We do uh, note that this val value update and replace are uh, here, but they're not used. We can actually get rid of those um, completely. So this should just be like this. So now we have a uh, function here, but it's uh, saying that this is not defined. And that's because we haven't imported it yet. So we can import it um, manually, or we can also um, do what's called auto import, which it knows that there is an export from DHIS2 app service data store called used saved object. So if I just click that, it will automatically um, import the correct thing. So let's get rid of these. And I think we should be done. Um, save this and let's re refresh this page. Now let's delete some of these test objects. So you can see that the um, we can also delete ones in the middle um, and we can eventually get to, to nothing. So we can then test object two, add visualization. And we can add and remove objects very easily from this list. Nice. So now we're now we're finished. There is something that this that that um, is a kind of an optimization that you could you might want to add when you're using the used save object hook just for the functions that, or the methods that it returns. So no, you you note that this this is actually returning the value of this used saved object. Um, in a more complex application. Anytime this value changes, so you might have an edit form somewhere else on the page, or on a different um, uh, different a router to a different page that lets you edit this object. Anytime you update that, this remove button will re-render, even though it really doesn't need to. So it will re-render because it's expect it's returning a value and it will wants to give you the most up to date value. But we're not actually using the value in this component itself. So in order to kind of uh, make a little bit of a performance optimization here, we can do something um, uh, a little bit more advanced that you don't need to, but you can say, uh, ignore, oh wait, what is this called? It's not auto-completing for me for some reason. Let's try this again. Should be here. Oh, it is not auto-completing. But we can do this um, in the documentation since the autocomplete has stopped working for some reason on this code sandbox. If we look at the documentation here, we'll see that each object has two options. And, and one of those is to ignore updates. So it's sorry that each hook has two, two options in the object. One is to whether or not it's used as the global store. And the other is whether or not to ignore the updates from other elsewhere in the application. So let's go ahead and pass that to this component as well. I'm um, sorry, not this one. Uh, ignore updates, true. There we go. So we, we, could, we could spend a little bit of time actually looking at this in the React um, dev tools to see when this component re-renders, but we can just test for now that this does still work um, and we have our uh, objects working here correctly. Okay.
Um, one thing that we could also test here. So let's try this. So we have this add function. Um, let's see if this will work. Um, I'm actually not positive because we're using the, the, um, the same add function um, for this use saved object list. So it may not uh, ignore the updates that are done on its own um, method, but let's try this. So let's see if this will actually um, break our application by not updating when we, have, when we use add. So actually when we do remove, there we go. So the, this object has actually been removed. If I refresh the page, it's gone but it wasn't updating actively in this list. So there, there, that's where you can see that the ignore updates works when it's, uh, there's a change that happens somewhere else in the application. If for instance, we say new object add, this is a test add help. I am invisible exclamation point add where am I? I just added a bunch of visualizations, but they didn't show up in this list. And that's because I set ignore updates to true, which can be a, a performance benefit when you don't want those updates to appear immediately. Uh, if I refresh this page, we should see all of those uh, objects have been created. Um, and now when I delete them, it also doesn't delete them from this list. Um, the way this actually works, so I'm gonna get rid of this here. I'm gonna set this to false. The way this works is that we actually, so two of these should be gone. We have two left and now I can delete them and they actually are deleted. The way this works is the, um, the app service data store actually um, uh, keeps track of uh, basically a local copy of the saved objects that it knows about. Uh, and then it propagates that any changes to that list to all of the places where these hooks are used so they can be updated in, in real time when, when a change happens. Um, and when we say ignore updates, we're not doing that. The reason that it's kept locally is that um, it doesn't, we, are, we know everything we need to know about the, the, those objects in the, in the browser. So we don't want to need to send a request to add an object to the server, wait for it to add, and then send another request to get the whole list again when we already have that whole list locally. So just another kind of tidbit and, and bonus feature of the app service data store here. And that's it. Um, those were our four tasks that we had. There's no, no other to do's in any of these files and we should be good. With that, does anybody have any questions? I see some, some in, the question, in the chat. Mm -hmm.